What's up, gamers, gamies, and gamettes? My name is uh, Walk Up, and welcome back to A Light in the Dark. Last time, holy crap, we got the most. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's gonna stop getting real every time, man. Freaking our main protagonist, Snap, freaking like he had enough of all the bias and like you know the witty remark of the kidnapper. I keep forgetting her last name. I can't even pronounce it right, to be honest. And also, we interacted more with the little uh, sister that she's like basically trust anything what her sister says. But you know, yeah. So let's continue the story. Day four, missed. Next. Achievement unlock. Dawn. Hey, cool. My head hurts. Yeah, I bet freaking your skin. Through, uh, through my eyelids, I felt the sharp sunlight. I opened them to see the little piece of the sky from the window. Uh, I passed a long, long night half asleep. I couldn't recall many details about last night. Just how weak I was. Oh, there's some new things. This is like a little car. I fl uh, fly to play. Ahem. Excuse me. Uh, fluctuating temperature uh, rendered my body powerless and my brain made me feel nauseated uh, like I had a hangover I felt there was something on my forehead then I realized it was a towel oh yeah that's right he got very sick and they took care of him actually that's right the ice has been uh, been melted by my body heat making the towel uh, disgustingly wet oh god it's this girl it's this it's this mom, Dot. Remembering my foggy dream, my heavy heart dropped even further to the bottom. That was a memory, a memory of my mother, as well as the last thing I wanted to remember. That she brought some stranger. Was it because of the stress? Oh. Eh? I suddenly realized my hands were free. Only the deep marks on my wrists proved that I wasn't dreaming. Huh? I started to move my hands in disbelief and tried to examine the rope on my legs and when I heard the cold voice of the girl next to me. Calm down. I'll tie you right back up if you dare touch the rope. The girl was already awake somehow, monitoring my every movement while holding the cell phone. I couldn't see the little girl. I assumed they were uh, taking turns to rest, but I wasn't sure where she'd gone. After the argument and torment from last night, uh, my own uh, animosity uh, ang <laughs> against her <laughs> is lessened a lot. Excuse me. Either that, or I just had no energy to care. Good morning. I coughed a few times and greeted her with a, uh, to, with a gathered strength. You took care of me last night? Hmm. She grunted unhappily. The non-committal reaction was her yes. Be quiet and save your energy to take care of yourself. Oh? Didn't, uh, didn't know you cared about me this much. Shut up! Her <laughs> shoes on the ground made a tap-tap sound. Uh, she walked to me and looked down from above. Stop acting like that. It's disgusting. Is that so? Stay quiet. I'll just say, is that so? Is that so? Oh, is that so? We are always acting as some characters in life. For those we cared about and the things we wanted, we acted in the, in, in a way others liked. Isn't that the part of being in society? Tolerating some, uh, some annoying people? Oh shit. And then turn yourself into a disgusting person. I'd rather die if that's the case. She interrupted me coldly and raises her knife <laughs> toward me meaningfully. I started to chuckle, seeing her annoyed expression. I hadn't seen such an honest expression of thoughts before. You didn't have to move a finger to kill me. If you let me uh, left me be <laughs> last night, I could have died. You still have some use now. After that, anything is fair game. She paused for uh, 
but she paused before finishing the sentence. There was some seriousness in her expression. You'll kill me after getting the money? After the silence, I decided to be transparent. She hesitated, then non conveniently shook her head. Who knows? Her attitude seemed to have soft, softened from before. At least she's no longer uh, hitting me at a random or threatened to kill me. If they really didn't care, they wouldn't have bothered to buy medicine for me. It could be my wishful thinking, but I have to believe they have no intention to, to really do it. So, my next step should be... Look for a chance to try to cooperate. Let's try to cooperate. I should cooperate and establish a better, a better relationship with them. I might be able to pursue them after winning their trust. Anyway, thank you. But what? For taking care of me. That's... She stumbled momentarily before responding. Tell your dad to cough up uh, the money faster then. What are you laughing at? <laughs> nothing, nothing. I didn't mean to enrage her, so I shook my head, uh, indicating it was nothing. A hostage thanking their kidnapper. This sort of development would make anyone doubt his or her sanity. The argument from yesterday was like a switch, bringing them forth emotions long forgotten. Is there anything to eat? My improvement co improving condition led to a better appetite. I asked her for food. Here. First a pack of cookies, then she threw a can of something else over. I picked up the can and started at a cola in my hand in confusion. I had no idea why this thing would be here. Do I drink this? Duh, what else would you do with a soda? Thanks. I still had no clue, but wouldn't say no to a chance to switch things up. I opened up the cookies and immediately to fill my stomach with something first, then wash them down with the soda. So sweet. Since all of I had was crackers and steam buns, the sudden uh, assault of flavor was too much. Take the medicine afterwards. I have no uh, time to babysit you. The medicine that she spoke of uh, was on the desk. The effect was uh, immediate and didn't make me sleepy. I wonder what it was made of. The food of partially freedom allowed me to relax my mind a little. A relaxed hostage? I must have been getting too comfortable with the situation. We will let you go once your dad pays. As though reading in my mind, she spoke to me calmly. This was the softest tone she ever used, as though she was com comforting me. Not able to bear the that gaze, I looked to the window. The more time we spent together, the more I understood her thoughts, her anger, her contempt, and deep down her unease. If there was a, a way to avoid harming anyone and end all this peacefully, I shook my head, laughing at myself for the naivety of that thought. Why not try, at least, dude? There's a lot of options we can do, actually. So what now? Remaining acts. Oh, what the hell? Oh, I can look more to the left! Alright, new scene opening. Click to arrow to observe your new scene to the bathroom. Alright, let's do it. Let's observe. I'm gonna go to- let's go to the bathroom. Nah, I think I already- wait, I already looked at the bathroom. Is that... Let's see. I don't think I- mm, mm, I don't want to waste it, but let's look here then. Damn, too small. Oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Really wasted. Some, some sunlight went through the foggy window, but it was still too small for a person to fit though. No updated. Alright. Nah, I already like that. Let's look at the box. Why not? Oh, wait a minute. The curtain? Oh, I can look there. Maybe we can look there. Can we look there? The ink green- oh really, the ink green uh, covered is in thick dust, most likely haven't gone on wash for a long time. I can't even tell what the original colors was. It was for concealing the light in the room at the night. It makes creaking sound every, uh, every time someone pulls it. 
However, if there's any uh, need to conceal the light, does it mean that there was someone else nearby? I want to look at this, but I want to talk to her too, man. Let's. I have one. Let's chat. Let's chat with her. Older girl. How much money do you actually owe? Yeah, let's ask about that, dude. How much money do you actually owe? Why are you asking this? It was rare, rare she didn't reply in mean words, just coldly. Is there no option? Is there no other option? Let's go with that. Is there no other option? Option? Even a million dollar debt shouldn't lead to kidnapping. You can still save that much if you work hard for a few years. <laughs> work hard? She burst into laughter and looked at me casually while supporting her head. My dad doesn't have a company for me to work for. What kind of job do you think I could find? Wait, what? Dishwasher, bar girl, prostitute. Oh. And what if I clear the debt? Then what? Finally starting my life at an age 30 or 40? Oh. Changing the subject, she asked me coldly in return. Why do I need to spend that much time while others can just cause by? If the world is never fair, then I'd rather gamble it all. Worst case scenario, it's just a death penalty. Not that different from now. Damn, I wasted the other two. I wanted to know what's, what else was there. Alright, it's dawn. I'm noon, whatever. No, it was not dawn. It meant, yeah, noon. Seeing that I had gotten better, she walked towards me with the rope. Okay. Your hands. Do you really need to tie me up? I can't escape like this. This or this, take your pick. She motioned uh, to the rope in her left hand, then the knife on the right hand. Rope. <laughs> I'd rather have the rope. Why would I pick knife? Uh, just please be more gentle. She nibbled down my hands. My wounds burn, uh, burned upon the contact with the rope's <clears throat> rough surface. Oh, damn it. Really? All right, there goes my stamina. Whatever. The bread she uh, brought back for lunch was a classic uh, scallion bread with pork floss. The long of absent flavor spread in my mouth and made this meal a feast after days of nothing but nutritive biscuits. In contrast to me, wolfing down the bread, she showed no appetite next into the window. What was she thinking about? I decided to focus on the bread before me since I just recovered from illness. You bought so many flavors this time. How come? Seeing all the flavors in the bag, I was confused by her generosity. They're leftovers. They were gonna throw them out anyway. She coldly turned her head and grunted it with a distaste. I hate those fancy shops that take pride in all quality. They rather throw out bread than giving it to those in need. Do you know what they say? If we gave the leftovers to others, the original customers would never buy them. <laughs> oh, such a uh, petty reason. Ha! <laughs> she mockingly laughed, despising the self-proclaimed fancy shops. From their point of view, they do have a point. I replenished some strength after filling my stomach and started to chat with her. It might be hard to understand, just like people not getting why other people pay thousands of Taiwan dollars for steak or much more for a pair of headphones. For most people, food was just a relief hunger for those people. However, it was a pursuit of the ultimate sensation of taste. Time does, does affect the bread texture the store needs to maintain the quality of their reputation. If the shop cut the price when there were some leftovers, then people would only come right before closing. This would affect the profitability negatively. I initially wanted to explain the impact of the expectation mindset, but decided to go with a simpler way to explain it. The shop needs to make a profit, so it's only natural for them to. Only natural. Oh, click again. Didn't I just say it, it's, it isn't, no, no, wait, what? <clears throat> Didn't I just say, 
it's it, it is not a matter of throwing it away or not <clears throat> but the mentality of the customers would impact pro that's what pissed me off what quality what reputation so some bread reputation is more important than starving people doesn't nothing matter besides the money the t that's natural to you her staring eyes were burning with fire like those that had seen the worst of humanity and were left over with a rage <clears throat> uh, why don't you change that then let's go with that why don't you uh, try to change that instead of complaining to me about it I still had an issue with her lying attitude even if one couldn't choose one's upbringing complaining wouldn't make it better if the game's rules couldn't be changed, then why not try to play by the rules first, then change them when you could do it so? There, were, there was always the option just to slit your throat, hang yourself, or jump off a building hoping it will be better next time. Still, a better alternative than whining all day long. Yes, I can only change it with my own hands. Surprisingly, there was no rebuttal. Just a mysterious smile on her darkened face. I had gone through her beatings and threads, but uh, her smile right there scared me more than ever. The girl was looking outside of the window with the cigarettes. I mean, cigarette. She was always extra quiet when smoking, like it was some serious ritual. In a room of only a few square feet in size, two people with opposite backgrounds quietly sat preoccupied with their own thoughts. How old was she? What happened? What? Uh, why was she doing this? I thought I didn't care, but the more time we spent together, the more I realized how different she was from my Im imagination. The criminals in the news all looked evil and inhumane. It was hard to imagine that they might have their stories too. The things they looked, the things they hate, the people they cherished, their worries, their thoughts. There was the sentence from a book. Everyone tried to live better. No one would think of him or herself as being irrational or crazy. If you felt that way, that meant you didn't know that person well enough. I didn't try to understand them. The fast-paced modern society made it exhausting to take care of oneself, let alone others. We didn't care about uh, what others were like. Labeling them as good guy or bad guy was just that much easier. So what now? Remaining acts three. I'm gonna look at my notes quick. Oh, that's not my notes. There it is. All right, there was a window. Da 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 da. Bathroom. Da 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 da. da Stabbing up. It's kind of good. Also, that's it. That's all I gotta know. Go get anything. Cause she said she was 30, 40, whatever. Okay. So there's that. Whatever. Let's. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll chat with her again. Oh, the girl. About what's next? What do you plan to do with the little girl? That little... Do we know each other? No, because she already explained it. I don't I don't think she would know. Let's go... Let's... Uh, I'll probably ask these two questions. I'll, I'll go with... About what's next? Hey. So, what's your plan after getting the money? Why do you ask? She suspiciously turned her head to me, waiting for my answer. Just curious. How oh, boring. During the long wait, I had nothing to kill time with but chatting. She stayed silent for a bit, tapping the cigarette ash on the desk, and then quietly opened her mouth. I want to start over. Somewhere where no one knows about me. Oh, okay. The face of the girl stating her vision was so determined, like some... Um, Poised none, mm, praying. There was neither passion nor desire, just serenity. I don't care what kind of job I get. I just want to save some money and live a normal life where I can sleep under a roof and eat properly. You can't do that now. It didn't. Uh, it didn't sound that impossible. She could have just grabbed the neck knapsack and gone off to the countryside. Like those working exchange, uh, exchange folks. Now? 
She laughed and waved her hand as though I just uh, asked something really stupid. No fucking way. Even if you change your face or name, they'll still hunt you down as long as you owe them money. But even if you got the money and paid off the debt, could you really get out of the, I mean, this that easily? Whether th the, uh, through surveillance cam and camera footage or call records, it is impossible to escape from the pursuit of the police thanks to modern technology. Escaping aboard might be an option, but the language barrier and the lack of cash would also be problematic. I didn't know if she had thought about this, but it was weird for me to ask her anyway. Is it strange to you? Nope, I thought of similar things. I think everyone has going somewhere, some place where no one knows who you are. Away from the stigma or any expectation, just to live as your true self. Oh, why would you want that? Are you still not satisfied with your life? Men are greedy animals. <laughs> hmm. Noticing I didn't speak the truth, she hesitantly opened her mouth, but nothing came out in the end. So what now? Remaining acts. Let's chat one more time. Let's go with... What do you plan with that little... It kind of looks like cigarette butts or some other thing. You know what? I'm going to ask... Uh, do we know each other? I'm just going to ask that. Fuck it. What do you plan to do with the girl, little girl? That girl. What's your plan? We let her go home after getting the money? Who? The one calling you big sis. She'll be with me, of course. I heard some gangs can, would manipulate underage girls and make them into lackeys to avoid arrest. It had been only a few days, but it was clear uh, little girl didn't know anything and only followed instructions from her big sis. She even looked worried when I was sick. It was uh, just cruel to ask a head of that age to be by, uh, by the scapegoat. Excuse me. Does her family know about this? Family? She frowned upon my question. There was some sort of communication barrier as something seemed amiss. She, had, uh, she has family, right? Or did they abandon her? Oh, uh, don't piss her off. I am her family. Eh? I couldn't make sense of it at the moment and just froze there, forgetting about what she even said. You... Didn't she call me big sis? Wait, so you really are her sister? Like sister sister? Sister sister. Nah, 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 nah. If you guys know that, <laughs> that reference. What else could it be? She impatiently crossed her arms across her chest and asked a matter of factly. Ah, so I thought she must be like a, her boss or maybe some surrogate sister. But if that was the case, then her faith in the big sis would make sense. They are blood relatives after all. Nothing, just that you don't look alike. Is that so? Ah! She suspiciously looked at me and burst into laughter upon realization. She saw through me. Oh shit. You thought she was like my lucky and I would send her to jail in my place once I get the money. She was smiling, but there was no warmth in her expression. Are you kidding, kidding me? I'll take responsibility on my own actions. Not like you people that grab all the goodies and stuff others with shit. I'll just think your little sister is a good kid and would rather she doesn't get involved. Oh, so you actually care about us? She replied absent-mindedly, as though not believing one word I said. Note updated. Alright, cool. So what now? Let's look at that. Achievement unlocked. Bonding. Hey, nice. Alright, cool. I got a bonding achievement. Alright, let's look at the notes. Made it. Alright, so they're really... Uh, they're, so they're really siblings. No wonder she was uh, so protective. Alright, let's do one more chat. Fuck it. Do we know each other? Let's go with it. Even though she... We're probably... She's gonna say no. Do we know each other? No way! Our lives have nothing to do with yours. Hearing my question, she snorted mockingly. Really? Somehow I think I've seen you before. Hearing how insistent I was, she tilted her head and started thinking. Maybe in a shop. No. That's impossible. 
Or maybe you've seen me on the news or in the police station, huh? Her smile seemed too sharp to cut me. Her points, words, made it hard to get close. Then why me? <laughs> Still thinking about that? She sighed impatiently. She waved her hand to indicate that she lost interest in this exchange. Your dad is filthy rich, and you live by yourself. Can you think of a better, uh, think of a better target? Oh, you think that there was some backstory? Just blame yourself for being too careless and your dad for being too rich. I was still uncertain if the culprit was someone I knew. The fact that she knew this much about my household was just bizarre. That question aside, didn't she just mention a shop? Yeah, exactly. Alright, it's a good thing I picked that. She had worked in a shop. What kind of shop? Day four, night. Here we go. Finally! The girl put down her phone and loosened her tense brow, along with a sigh of relief. What's up? Lucky for you, things have worked out. Your dad will pay tomorrow. For real? Duh, why would I lie to you? She seemed to be in a rather good mood since all I got was just a look rather than a solid flying kick. Stay put and nothing will happen to you. So, you will let me go? Who knows? What the fuck you mean? <laughs> Just don't have any funny ideas and wait patiently until tomorrow. She gave no promises and I just shrugged with an ambiguous attitude. It went differently than I expected. According to my understanding of my father, he would have tried, uh, tried to buy more time to let the police track the kidnapper down. Yet, yeah, instead of he could send it rather easily, did he really plan to just pay up? Knowing him, he wouldn't believe the kidnapper's claim uh, so easy and uh, easily. He must have had a plan. Probably. No idea. I didn't know what he had in mind, which was a sad realization of how distant our relationship was. Why do you look so pissed? Did your brain burn out? She asked with a little surprise after seeing me not saying anything with a lowered head. As if. I responded uh, vaguely. Well, I didn't think things would go this smoothly. I had no intention to tell my kidnapper that. <laughs> Without noticing my concern, she mumbled before opening a can of soda next to the window. Uh, she leaned back against the wall and let out a long and tired sigh. She coolly didn't have it better than me, outside of the preventing me from escaping. She also had to worry about the police and negotiating process with my family. It might have seemed like it had been over <clears throat> soon, but the key's events were tomorrow. Would they be really paid as they promised? Could it be, a me uh, uh, be as a means to buy time? They always say parents will pay any amount for money for their children's safety. Don't make me laugh. We are not norm we are not a normal family. Nothing could be done with this broken excuse of relationship. Despite telling myself not to have any hope, I still wish for them to pay up. A self uh, contradiction tr contradiction mm, even I couldn't really explain. My head started to ache again while pondering it. I tried to rest against the wall, but all sorts of thoughts stuck in my mind. Oh god, the mother. Be a good boy at home, okay? Liar. So, what's with your mother? Huh? I came back to my senses from the rather fuzzy memory and answered absentmindedly. Why is there no contact at all from your mother? She is right here in Taiwan, but refuses to show up after her, uh, her own son is kidnapped. That's strange. Maybe she's busy. All the unpleasant memories came to mind, making me try to change the subject reflectively. Are you kidding me? She raised her eyebrow, coolly not pleased with that, this answer. In retrospect, it wasn't really a convincing answer, but I still didn't intend to say more than that. Why do you care about my family? Are you an arranged marriage agent? If you let me go, I can make, my, make you my number. Maybe we... I stopped right in front of the... Uh, right in the middle of the sentence. It was only my voice throughout the conversation. She would normally have interrupted me by now. The street silence right across the room. I lift my gaze and looked into her black eyes, realizing I sucked at hiding, uh, hiding my thoughts. You really talk. 
like a lot when you're uh, when it's about things you don't want to answer. Is that some rich boy habit? Maybe. I didn't expect her to notice such details, so I acknowledge her sharply observation with a bitter smile. Didn't you? Did you? Didn't you figure me out already? You should know our relationship was bad. All I care about is you have money. Your relationship is none of my business. Alright, now then. I responded casually, but I couldn't help but wonder about the intention behind this question. Sheer curiosity? I felt it was that simple. I just want to hear from you what's wrong with your mom. Even Mr. Ken said it was pointless guns I care for. Mr. Ken? Never mind, so you gonna talk or not? Seeing her impatiently brushing her hair, I lowered my head to ponder how to respond. I didn't know where to start, really. It was embarrassing that I didn't feel like to need to tell her. Dots. What? Is she your stepmother or your father's mistress? Seeing me now pondering, she started to guess randomly and managed to get pretty close to the truth. Something like that. Just the roles are reversed. Huh? In the end, I decided to go with the easiest explanation. Alright, backstory now. My mom had another man. I fucking knew it! It wasn't really something I couldn't talk about, but it just triggered tons of unhappy memories. Since I was a kid, she often went out with someone, but I didn't know where to and what for. It sometimes would take her a whole week before she came home. Even the housekeeper couldn't give me a direct answer. Your mom is having an affair. There'd be no way for me to tell a ten-year-old that either. Oh. She supported her head with a smile on her face, which looked more like a gloating than sympathy. You guys are strange. Always doing these sort of things. Affair? Inherency fights? Don't you have better things to do? Not expecting me to answer, she started to talk to herself and laugh, as though hoping to balance things out by hearing others' misfortune. What a poor man your dad is, making all that money aboard just to raise a woman for another man. He knows. He knows? I said it casually and s saw her staring at me dumbfounded. Yeah, he knew about my mother's affair. Cool story, right? Are you an idiot? Have a sense of humor. Why didn't, why didn't they have a divorce? Did he forgave her? Or maybe your mother has the money? She ignored my joke and kept praying. After co uh, confirming the, uh, the ransom payment, she became a lot more talkative. Who knows? I don't care, nor do I don't want to figure it out. They like, they like it this way, and I can't do anything about it. I actually asked about that just once. I can never forget this, uh, his reaction back then. I angrily told him about my mother's affair, and the hand touching me tensed up immediately. Yet the shock only stayed on his face momentarily before being replaced by another emotion. Some sense of relief. He subtly rubbed my head and told me, Mommy didn't have an affair. I simply misunderstood. Misunderstood? No explanation, just one single word. With the company increasing in size, he spent more and more time abroad. Never did he ask mother's whereabouts, nor comfort her, as though nothing happened. Why didn't he ask for her? Why didn't they divorce? Why feign ignorance? I couldn't ask any anything seeing his soft smile. And the unanswered question becoming, became a gap between us. It got wider over time until it became an unfixable distance. Maybe he has a mistress too. The marriage was just too ruse. Maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. Does your dad still love her? After staying silently for a while, she eventually asked. I don't know. At last, I couldn't. I didn't say the second part, and it didn't matter what the answer was. I deleted her phone number that day. I moved out during high school, keeping uh, minimal contact with my family. Since money came in every month, meeting up or not didn't matter. 
Maybe she knew that she already found out about it. No, maybe she wanted us to find out. In retrospect, too many things didn't make sense. There were better excuses for an affair to keep me from the discovering it. She wanted Dad to know. Un un unbelievable as it was, it did explain many things. To force him to propose divorce, testing his reaction, regardless of the motive, there was no argument nor confrontation <clears throat> as I expected, just the status quo. Maybe she wanted to get an alimony by forcing your dad to divorce. No one would openly have an affair to get an alimony. No judge would be so stupid. Hmm. She tried to find an explanation with a darkened expression. Save it. You won't find the answer. They've been like this for years. They at least tried to hide it from me when I was young. Now, they don't even bother. The moment he was on the plane she already on she she was already on her way to spend the night with another man she just needed to play a good wife when he came home as though nothing happened it was like an adult version of playing house the curtain raised and everyone played their arranged parts you you are the dad working abroad you are the mom talking ki taking care of the house you are the kid that needs to go to school We all knew it was fake, but no one would spell it out. I kept thinking that if my dad's company wasn't that big, if my family wasn't that rich, maybe things could have been different. You think things would be different without the money? I expected that to trigger her. She started laughing coldly. Why, why is it difficult to just openly discuss this? Do you really have to make this more complicated? Seeing her angry uh, reaction, I somehow felt a little re reassured. I finally com I confirmed I, myself, wasn't abnormal, but that my family relationship was abnormal. Things wouldn't go away if you pretended you didn't see them. That was just lying to yourself. Make things clear and break up if you, there is no more love. Don't keep per uh, perpetuating a lie if you don't want to be together. How simple is that? Who knows? <laughs> they like it that way. I didn't want to argue with her. The world is too complicated. Too many people, too many things will take a lifetime to understand. Why do they have to do that? Why do society function like this? Why can't one ever be satisfied? I don't know. If there's no answer, then you just accept it. Reality wouldn't just change just because you don't agree with it or because you know the cause. Damn no! Are you nuts? She waved her uh, hand impatiently, as though nothing I said was worth a damn dime. Excuse me. Why don't you figure it out if it's so strange? Are you some soap opera protagonist? Ha! Huh. You don't get it, even if I. You, you're the one that, who doesn't get it. Abruptly interrupted me, she coldly responds. You don't know how lucky you are. You don't know how many people envy you. You just keep saying you can't do it. How many people want to be like you? And yet, here you are telling me, I wish I had less money. So quit the self-pity. You are lucky, rich boy. If you want to escape from this type of problem, you may as well just die. Angry as usual, but this time it seemed different. I could tell that she was treating what I said seriously and was dumbfounded by the realization. I never told anyone about my family. I realized it wouldn't matter even if I did. Is that it? How come? Poor thing. The pointless reaction was just exhausted. No one really cared. And then it became a random subject of chit chat. It was like talking about disasters on social media. All the self righteous comments were really just empty words on things that had nothing to do with you. All it did was notify others hey, I know about this. I have a heart. It's all meaningless. If you want to escape from your. escape from this even type of problem. You may as well just die. 
fun hearing that. I realized I was escaping. Fearing that atmosphere, fearing my parents, I came ran into my ran into my own world. I never attempted to negotiate with them. What? Say something. Seeing me not saying anything, she started uh, stared at me coldly while brushing her messy hair. No. You're you are right. You're right. I sighed and I actually felt much better despite my situation remaining the same. <laughs> she went silent, hoping to see if I was mocking her or being honest. Then she spat and turned uh, her head away, seemingly more awkward than mad. Doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> I won't be seeing you again after getting the money tomorrow. Mm, good luck. She lit up a cigarette, the faint tobacco smell permeated the room along with the cold, the cool night air. Excuse me. If they did get the money tomorrow and everything just ended with that would be the best possible outcome. I shook my head. I laughed myself at myself. Even I couldn't believe that. Life is fated to be tragedy. We thus live in hope of a miracle. I recall that line. The air I breathe out turn into white smoke. Through it, I saw a foggy moon outside of the window. Even if just once, I hoped the miracle would happen. Transition, a light in the dark. Three o'clock in the morning. The girl was falling asleep in the chair. She had woken up uh, a few times in fit of her uh, drowsiness. Even the energy drinks didn't help much. Worried she might actually fall asleep, she decided to sit next to the door with uh, the blanket. There was only one exit. He would have uh, have to go. Oh, he would have had to go through here if he had escaped it. Even triple chucking the ropes, mm, the ropes couldn't remove the unease. The imagine of him escaping came to her mind every time she closed her eyes. It would be all over in a few hours. That was the simple determination that kept her going till now. She had an image, I mean, she had imagined how she would pay off her debt multiple times, and now she could see the end of the line. She didn't know how to avoid arrest or what to do afterwards. She just had to believe that things would be different. Just a few more hours. Quiet sleep talking echoed throughout the room. The girl secretly closed her eyes. Transition. Day five, choice. Woo! All right, oh my God. Well, this was kind of almost short in a way. So I guess I'm gonna leave it off for right here for right now, guys. I hope you guys have a good night, good evening, and good morning from where you're from. So we're gonna find out what's gonna happen next. If we're gonna, if da if like the main protagonist's dad's gonna actually pay up, or something worse is about to happen. So without further ado, I hope you guys have a good night, good evening, and good morning from where you're from. So peace out and sayonara. Bye bye. <laughs>